Um, so congestion control is a very hard problem. People have been working for it for decades, uh, specifically in TCP starting in the 80s when Van Jacobson started you know, introducing the Reno control for slow start and uh, the congestion window until last year and this year with Google and BBR. Uh, it is hard because the flows need to utilize the available bandwidth, which they do not know how much there is, in a fairly way, be fair about it, when many unrelated flows are competing. Okay. So consider when the uh, flow is starting up, right? You have no idea of the available bandwidth. You have to figure out a way to use it. Now imagine that for some magical way, the flow could know how much available bandwidth there is, right? So you, you could think, well, I'm just gonna use some rate control and use all of the available bandwidth. I mean, it's right there. The problem is that there could be two, five, 10 flows starting at, at the same time, and they would all get the same information, right? But you do not know how many there are. So that even if you knew how much bandwidth there is, it would still you know, be hard problem you know, to solve, to, to be able to use it quickly. So in this talk, I will focus and do an analysis of Reno, you know, the grandfather, Cubic, which is an improvement for uh, longer RTTs, uh, DC TCP, data center TCP, that uses CCN markings to uh, adapt to the available bandwidth. And it's only good for data centers. BBR, the new player in town, with still a lot of questions about it, NB, uh, New Vegas, which is a follow to, Be to Vegas, and that's my baby. And it's only tuned for the data center, so I will only use it in that environment. And it's also using TCP VPF to get a base RTT. And also we'll talk about TCP VPF, which is cubic, but using TCP VPF like I described yesterday to control the congestion window, to clamp it, and other improvements like that. And this week, you know, like the last three days, because I had time, I decided to add big Jiha, high speed, HTCP, and Westwood in the analysis for some of these scenarios. So I have about 50 slides, so I hope you guys are not hungry. You're gonna be late for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> just kidding. No, and I have 50 slides, but I will cut them quickly. So le let me start by differentiating between congestion control and congestion avoidance. And that's something I like to do. Congestion control, like what Reno and Cubic do, do not avoid congestion. On the contrary, they periodically create congestion to create losses uh, to figure out how much that they have reached all of the available bandwidth. Right? And as a result of the losses, typically the high percentile latencies for small transfers are high. Uh, DC TCP, BBR, and B do congestion avoidance. They try to detect congestion that could build up before it leads to losses in order to uh, prevent losses. And I have an asterisk on BBR because under some conditions, it is very happy with losses. So, uh, so obviously no losses means better high percentile latencies. So for these experiments, uh, the setup was, you know, for simplicity, I just wanted to have a simpler environment for these experiments. I have three hosts sending, going to a switch, going to a receiver. So these are for the TG 10 gigabit test. And when I want to introduce latency on the receiver, I use NetEM, and I'm using a limit of 20,000 packets so that I'll make sure that NetEM will not drop packets. Uh, I'm, I'm only doing for these experiments when I use NetEM 10 millisecond delays, so the 20,000 buffers is more than enough for that. And by the way, if you have any questions, feel free to interrupt me as I'm doing it, because by the time we get to the end, you probably f will forget your questions. So, and if it starts getting too crazy, I'll stop you. Uh, for the other experimental setup, I'm doing 10 and 100 megabyte per second test with 40 millisecond latencies. And for those, I'm using another host as a router, and I'm using a TBF to uh, limit the bandwidth, and then use a NetEM on the receiver to add the latency. And this way, I can control the number of uh, buffers on the bottleneck switch. 
Okay, so I'm gonna cover, I looked into a couple different scenarios. The first one is just the LAN, like at a data center with 20 microsecond RTTs, 10 gigabits per second. Another scenario is like a fast one, 10 gigabit per second, 10 millisecond RTTs. And then the final one is like a one like going to the internet, 40 milliseconds RTTs, 10 and 100 megabits per second. And for my test, I did a couple different scenarios um, for the test or types of test. Uh, one type consists of two or three streaming flows like a few flows just to be able to visually look at the behavior and the dynamics of the congestion algorithms. You know, like if we had too many, we cannot see it. So just a few to be able to analyze it. And if there's problems with two or three, it probably will indicate that there's fundamentally something that needs to be dealt with, with the uh, congestion algorithm. And I also did uh, another type of test where I have multiple flows of streaming one or eight megabyte or 10 kilobyte RPCs. And these are really good to see how fair is the congestion algorithm when the flows are different sizes. You know, that the bigger flows uh, take all the bandwidth away from the smaller flows like 10 kilobyte RPCs. <coughs> and I use Netesto, <coughs> I use Netesto that I talked about last time to run the experiments. Uh, it allows me, I have a small script, run it, it you know, starts running like 100 tests one by one, changing a lot of parameters like congestion algorithm. Uh, it's just a few lines of Netesto. It controls the senders, the receivers, collects all the data, brings that back, creates all the graphs. Graphs of good puts, RTTs, congestion windows, retransmissions, everything is done automatically and you just have to, you know, uh, process the data or look at it. I used the latest Linux kernel as of a week or so ago. Uh, I also use uh, MQ and FQ Corel skewing disciplines on the senders uh, because you know BBR is the default and BBR uh, prefers it. And for the DCTCP and MB, uh, the Swiss has two queues, one for them and one for the other traffic. And the reason is that both of these have issues with fairness when competing with other types of flows like cubic. Uh, DCTCP will hurt cubic if there's only one ECN marking queue, and MB will be hurt by cubic if there's only one queue. Okay, now the results. So let's start with the 10G LAN, and let's just look at two flows. And I hope you guys, is that visible? Okay, great. So this is cubic, and in for this experiment with two flows, I'll start one flow that will run for 60 seconds, then like 23 seconds later, I'll start another flow, also cubic, and see how they interact. And here we see that given enough time, the good puts will converge. Uh, surprisingly, running on a LAN, it takes a long time to converge, right? And the reason, sorry, and the reason it takes a long time to converge because the congestion window, which by the way, I set the buffer sizes to 30 megabytes because I do not want them to affect the behavior of the congestion algorithm, right? Because if I set small buffer sizes uh, artificially, I'm affecting that behavior. I want to let the congestion algorithm do its own thing and not be bound by any restrictions. So we can see that the initially the congestion window is like 500 packets for cubic, once the other flow starts, it jumps to 2,500 packets, right? It needs less than 100 packets to achieve full throughput. So the RTT, because of this, now became like more than 10 milliseconds, and that's why it's taking so long to converge. The RTT seen by the flow, rather than being 20 microseconds, which would allow it to convert ver converge very quickly, is more than 10 milliseconds. And this is what I mean by, uh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. And this is what I mean that uh, Reno and Cubic, you know, periodically congest, right? So every time it goes down, it's because it lasts packets. Uh, this is TCP, you know, like when they very quickly converges, to be fair. And then when the other flow starts, very quickly goes back up. 
okay? Uh, which is what is to be expected. I should mention, however, that for some reason in my environment, I'm getting losses with DCTCP, okay? And I do not know if it's a bug in the code or an issue with my environment. Like in this experiment, where there's only one flow, I'm retransmitting 7,000 packets within the first 200 milliseconds. So as a result of the slow start, something is going on. Now, there shouldn't be con congestion. All of the links are the same bandwidth, 10 gigabits per second, right? So there should be no congestion, but this TCP is transmitting, retransmitting 7,000 packets initially. What do you mean by? Yeah, packet loss. Yeah, but if I look at the switch queue and see how many packets the queue, the switch dropped for that for the ACN queue, it says zero. Oh, because I can look at a TCP dump and see whether you know those packets were received later, whether it's reordering or not. Yeah, and okay. it's not reordering. Yeah, right? there's also a counter, you know, saying you know mm -hmm. it's a yeah, spurious exactly. reaction. Yeah. So, I will look at it after I get back. I just didn't have time to figure out what's going on. So, so it's a caveat that uh, that's what I'm seeing. Um, and by mistake, okay. Now, interestingly, you know, like when this this TCP starts, its congestion window is very large. 500 packets, right? The reason is that it's not getting any ECN markings. There's only one flow. The switch is not, there's no bottleneck in the switch, so it has no ECN markings. Uh, when the other flow starts, now we're getting congestion at the switch, and the congestion windows decrease to less than 100. When the second flow stops, the congestion, you know, the congestion window again increases because it's not getting any markings. Uh, I could tune uh, Corel, you know, to uh, so that it would give me markings w w when it's uh, having a queue in, in the host, but I just use the default values. BBR, uh, so let me do it this way. Uh, you know, it starts very nicely, very quickly, goes to the right bandwidth. We see the periodic decrease of the uh, rate and congestion window as it probes for the RTT. When the other flow starts, you know, it's more or less fair. Uh, not as fair as, as a BBR, but it's not too bad. And then when the other flow starts, it very quickly goes up. The congestion windows are also much better controlled than with uh, DCTCP when there's only one flow or, wi or with cubic. Um, so. Uh, so this is MB using the base RTT of 80 mac microseconds. If I don't use it, then there's more variability. Okay, so caveat, this helps a lot. You know, telling NB that more than any 80 microseconds RTT means congestion, it really helps it. It doesn't need to figure it out on its own. And other algorithms could use this feature if they wanted to. Um, and this is cubic also using TCP BPF to clamp the congestion window to 100 packets. Obviously, you know, everything works really, really nicely, perfect, because they all stay at 100 packets, so it's perfect, perfectly shared, perfect everything. Uh, so the next one is gonna be three flows. The first one is gonna be cubic, and it's gonna be competing with two of something else. Uh, so this is cubic versus two BBR. And uh, for this specific case, cubic starts very nicely. Uh, when BBR starts, starts, it decides there is congestion, so it slows down, and cubic keeps a lot of the bandwidth. And then for a, for a moment, you know, they change places. And then the second flow, the, thir the second third flow starts right here. And so it's a little bit chaotic behavior. And in some cases, uh, Cubic gets most of the bandwidth. In other cases, BBR gets most of the bandwidth, uh, depending on the dynamics of BBR. Uh, the congestion windows are small when cubic's by itself. When the other flow starts, cubic just goes crazy. Uh, and then M 
VBR is here, the congestion window, and then it goes all the way here, and then it goes down. So let's see. Cubic with DCTCP uh, is very nice when there's two flows, like we saw. When we get another flow, then because we have two queues, we have to specify how much bandwidth each queue is going to get, right? And the idea is that if there is con contention, you divide it 50-50. So in this case, cubic gets 50%, and the other 50% are divided evenly by the other two DCTCP flows. So that's one of the drawbacks of having to have multiple queues where you're sharing the, the bandwidth like this, uh, fairly like this. And for the congestion windows, uh, cubic goes crazy again. Uh, DCTCP is very low. And because they are in different queues, they are protected and everything is good. Uh, and the DCTCP flows will have low latency and the cubic flows will have high latency. Uh, if we use the TCP BPF program to clamp the windows and we run the cubic VBR experiment, then everything looks perfect. Okay? Uh, so TCP BPF does help like on the data center to get good results with, you know, at least with a num limited number of flows. Okay, so now we're gonna look at the same environment, the data center with many more flows. And I'm doing, for each host sender is running one streaming, uh, one 10 kilobyte RPC and many one megabyte RPCs. And I'm gonna increase the number of one megabyte RPCs to create more load more congestion to see how the algorithms react to it. So this is the uh, environment I told you. One streaming, one 10 kilobyte RPC, and many one megabyte RPCs. Okay, so what happens? So the X, sorry, uh, this one. So here we have the number of flows. So as we move to this side, we're increasing the number of flows. Uh, the left axis, the bars, are the rate in gigabits per second. And this is, the, this is for the streaming flows, right? So I'm going to look at each of those independently. So what happens with the streaming flows? Uh, this is the rate. And on the right side is the number of uh, retransmissions. Okay. So and I have cubic, TCTCP, and BVBR, and TCP BPF. So we see that BVR, which is the red one, you know, it has, I'm sorry, the uh, brand one or the master color, it seems like, you know, it's much higher than the other one. So you would think, well, that's great. You know, that it's working well. It's grabbing a lot of the bandwidth. But remember that that bandwidth is being shared by the other flows. So if it's high here, it probably means that the one megabyte RPCs and the te 10 kilobyte RPCs are going to suffer. They all utilize all of the bandwidth very well. So there was no case of underutilization, okay? Uh, and we also see that BBR has a large number of retransmissions, okay? And BBR is not tuned for the LAN necessarily. It needs certain amount of buffers at the bottleneck. So the DC is not the ideal environment for BBR. So I should, should give that caveat. But the one million line, it's around 2% retransmissions, okay? So, and everybody else has like 0.01% with transmissions. So, uh, you know, the main thing here is that BBR gives more of the bandwidth to the streaming flow. This is the one megabyte RPC good put. Uh, let's see. So the other ones are giving more bandwidth to the BBR as compared to, to the one megabyte RPCs. Uh, BBR is suffering a little bit. Although similar, I would ignore DCTCP because of the problems I saw with the transmissions. Uh, and also, once again, BBR is, has a higher number of retransmissions, quite a bit higher. So now let's look at the more interesting. This is the 10 kilobyte RPCs, okay? How are they doing when they're com competing with the other flows? Uh, so we can see that as we increase the number of flows, BBR is doing, you know, worse and worse and worse, right? So it tends to give more bandwidth to the fatter flows, the streaming and the one megabyte RPC flows. Um, 
let's see, uh, TCP VPF is good. And the reason the other flows get more bandwidth is because of their congestion windows. Uh, cubic, BBR, et cetera, are allowing the fatter flows to have bigger congestion windows. They, they don't need more than 100 packets to fully utilize the bandwidth by themselves, right? But they're allowing them to grow to hundreds. Therefore, every RTT, they're sending hundreds of packets. The 10 kilobyte RPC is sending seven packets. So its throughput obviously suffers a lot. Uh, TCP VPF helps by limiting the congestion window to 100. So the fatter flows will not have more than 100 packets. Okay? So therefore, the RTT is smaller, and the 10, 10 kilobyte RPCs do well. NB that's even better than that. It decreases it to like 20 packets or 15 packets as we get more flows. Therefore, that 10 kilobyte RPCs are doing really well. The RTT is very small. So they can send, you know, they can push the seven packets very quickly in one RTT that is only, you know, a millisecond as opposed to 10 milliseconds for, for the other cases. Uh, and this shows the latencies for the 10 kilobyte RPCs uh, in milliseconds, and this is a log scale. Um, so once again, you know, for, uh, let's see, BBR has high one and goes up. This is TCP, as I say, ignore this is TCP. It was dropping packets, so it's not behaving the way it should be behaving. But comparing with everybody else, BBR has higher latencies quite a bit. And, and this distance, it's a factor of five, right? This is a log scale. Uh, interestingly, both NB and BBF, PB, uh, TCP BPF, the 99 percentile latencies on the left and the 99.9 .9 percentile latencies are about the same, right? Uh, BBR is a factor of five, at least. So you're getting to the second uh, latencies in the worst case scenarios for the 99.9 .9 percental latencies. A quick question, Larry. Yes. Uh, your previous slide shows uh, BBR has a high retransmission as well, the BBR? previous one. It had um, um, the, the green so dot. What is green dot? Because these are the retransmission for the yeah. take came flows, right? And it's not sending very many of those. So all of the retransmissions for BBR in this experiment were like 2% retransmissions overall, OK? The 10 kilobytes. They look like small because it's not sending many RPCs. Right. But so the, this, uh, the primary issue long, is that long tail latency. Or latency is due to retransmission, maybe. The long tail, the ninety nine point nine, probably yes. That's why we see the factor of five going up. Uh, but you, you know, like like here, they're still big, and they are not. You know, the RTO is two hundred thousand, right? Uh, these are in microseconds. This should be microseconds. I forgot to divide by 10, sorry. This should be microseconds. So this line is 100 milliseconds. Uh, so let's see, BBR is below it, right? So this, like at this point, is not due to RTOs, right. right? It's just due to the bigger congestion window for the other flows. OK, so now I'm going to move. Man, I'm flying. We will be able to get to the uh, 50 slides after all. Uh, so the next scenario is a 10G with a 10 milliseconds uh, latency, RTT. Okay, and these are somewhat more interesting. Uh, so what I did here, I don't want to go through all the flows, even though they look really interesting, uh, the behaviors. I will show some of those. This is the two and three flow aggregate good put and retransmissions. Okay, are they able to fully utilize the bandwidth? when we have a 10 millisecond delay, right? And so this reflects how quickly the congestion algorithm can ramp up its congestion window to fully use the available bandwidth. So initially, you know, they will do slow start, how quickly they stop. If they stop too low, how quickly they can go up after that indicates how well they utilize the available bandwidth. Ah, sorry. Uh, so BBR that's really, really well, right? It's able to use you know, as much as it can, almost. And the blue one re reflects two flows. The red one reflects three flows. Uh, the diamonds, 
the green diamonds are the number of percent retransmissions, and it has high retransmissions, like 0.7 percent for two flows, uh, more than three percent for three flows. Okay, uh, and this is due to the fact that the buffer size on the queue on the switch is small; it's not bandwidth delay product uh, size. It's m smaller than that. Uh, so let's see what else. Uh, everybody else has very small retransmissions, like less than 0.1%. Uh, some of these, you know, like Westwood does horrible in utilizing the bandwidth. Uh, Reno is not too good either. Uh, high speed is in between. Cubic is not too good at it either. Um, it takes a long while to ramp up. And I'm surprised about Cubic because in the past, I thought I've seen it ramp up a lot faster. You know, it has this mode where it is logarithm around the time of the previous losses, then it goes exponential. Uh, and I've seen it do a lot better, so I don't know if any changes in, our, in, the, in the code path have affected it. Um, Big does really well, which, you know, I would imagine Cube would have done just as well in this environment. And yeah, that's really well too. So let's look at some examples of the good put for these scenarios, right? And to explain why we saw the behavior that they didn't use all of the available bandwidth during this 16 second period. If I waited, you know, three, four, five minutes, they probably would have used, you know, better utilization. So Cubic, you know, had losses here and then very slowly grows. You know, it takes it more than 12 seconds, you know, to, to try to get to the full utilization. At this time, the second flow starts Things look a little bit better. You know, it's fully utilizing the bandwidth now. Another flow starts. So it's slowly converging so that they, you have fairness. But for example, here, once all the flows stop, cubic, you know, like in the seven seconds that it has left, it really doesn't make much headway on, on ga using the available bandwidth. And again, I'm surprised about this um, for cubic. Uh, this is BBR, and this is the normal case for BBR, meaning most of the time it behaves like this, and it works really well. It very quickly runs up, uses all the bandwidth. Every now and then it does the RTT probing. When another flow starts, it immediately you know becomes fair. Another flow starts, it really behaves really really nicely. The third flow stops, it goes up very quickly. This flow stops you know, the first flow goes up, right? It looks perfect, just gorgeous. Uh, this image shows what's going on with the retransmissions, a lot of them, right? 700,000 retransmissions for the, uh, for the first and second flows. It's retransmitting a lot, but it doesn't care. You know, it's like 2%. It's happy. It makes use of the bandwidth. You know, it's a small price to pay under many scenarios unless you're trying to compete with it, obviously. So this is Big, and Big is doing a lot better than Cubic, which I, again I'm surprised. Uh, very quickly uses it when another flow starts, they slowly converge. Uh, when another starts, you know they're slowly converging, so they're not as fair obviously as BBR. And when the third flow stops, you know very quickly they use the bandwidth. When the last flow starts, it jumps very quickly to use it. Right? Remember. Cubic could not do this jump in more than six seconds. This is doing it like in one or two seconds, it's jumping and using all of the bandwidth. Retransmissions are about 6,000, so 100 times less than BBR. So you are getting not the fairness of BBR, but the utilization of BBR with a lot fewer retransmissions with Big, which is just kind of ironic. Many times, I mean, many of us in the past used to run Big in our data centers. When Cubic came about, we ran Cubic because it was better. But something is going on right now that for longer RTTs, Big is much better than Cubic. Uh, JL, that's really, really well. Uh, it uses the bandwidth with one flow. When another one starts, very quickly they converge. When the third one starts, they converge more or less, not as good as VBR, but very quickly. One stops, they, you know, they very quickly use it. You can see like this line is the aggregate good put. It's pretty good. And the retransmissions are like 
7,000 initially with the slow start, and then there's almost barely any retransmission. So it looks really nice. Uh, the problem with BBR is that I've seen flow collapse, where one of the flows will just collapse, right? And this shows some of, I ran 20 times the same experiment with three flows and with two flows. And, you know, like every now and then this would happen. Uh, one is great, the other one started is great, the third one started everything is great, and then suddenly the first flow just collapses, totally collapses. The other one, when the third flow stops, the second flow jumps and uses it. When this collapses, uh, the first flow stays collapsed. Maybe we have gone up later, I do not know. But, you know, like and here you can see that he did the RTT probing right here, and it, it still stayed done. No idea what's going on. Uh, retransmissions, again, they're high, about 2% for all of them. But even like after the second flow stops, there's no retransmissions, and it's just not, not increasing. Uh, this one is even worse. Uh, the first flow for BBR is doing great. Second flow starts, it stays down. It just doesn't do anything. Third flow starts, it stays down, right? If we look at the retransmissions, there are not many anymore, right? There's only a few retransmissions that are seen by the blue flow, which is the first flow. There's only like 9,000 total. The other flows didn't see any retransmissions. So they are not suppressed because they saw retransmissions. They are suppressed because their mechanism to detect congestion decided there is congestion, so I'm gonna slow down and I'm gonna stay down. And so what I've seen in my experiments, you know, 20 repeats, is that in 10% of the cases with two flows, there would be at some time one of the flow collapses. With the three flows, 20% of the times, one or two of the flow collapse. Okay? Now, this collapse may also be triggered by noise introduced by NetEM. Okay? However, you would expect it to be able to recover, right? Like in the previous one, uh, where you said? Here, this flow has 40 seconds to recover, right? I mean, and, and if we saw before, sometimes the flows were very happy like this flow. So, you know, unless this flow is being punished by NetEM, introducing a lot of noise only for this flow, you know, uh, it's not able to recover in 40 seconds. So, okay. So what are our fairness against cubic? Uh, I look at all the graphs. 20 graphs per, per each combination and all that to, to get an idea. I have some numbers, but I decided, you know, I'm gonna show them for other things, not this. Uh, cubic loses against BIC and BBR, typically. JL loses against cubic. So he doesn't, I mean, he like totally suppressed against cubic. So it does really well against itself. It does really poorly against cubic. And cubic and Reno end up being even, right? And I'm surprised because the 10 millisecond RTT case Cubic should be able to do better, right? I mean, big, that's much better, that, you know, against cubic. So I think something funky is going on with cubic. Uh, do you have any uh, number on, you know, big versus PBR? No. Oh, okay. You know, this is the result of a couple, more than a thousand experiments. <laughs> so I had to limit, you know, like, like if you look back, uh, like once I saw that, like, West was doing poorly, I stopped testing it, right? So I only stay with Beak and Jaya. Uh, but I ran hundreds or like 2,000 experiments, so it's, it's hard to process everything uh, with enough time. Okay, uh, so good put on retransmissions for, hold on, okay. So now we're gonna go back to the size and fairness test where I'm doing multiple, you know, like streaming. In this case, eight megabyte and one megabyte. Uh, the 10 kilobyte doesn't make sense because the RTT is so large, you know, it doesn't get much throughput. So I use eight megabyte RPCs and one megabyte RPCs to see what happens. And so this is the overall good put and the number of retransmissions. And this is for cubic, BBR, big, and yeah. Uh, so this is, as we move on the X axis, we're increasing the number of eight megabyte RPCs. There's always one streaming and one one megabyte RPC. 
but we increase the number of eight megabyte RPCs, and this is the good put. Uh, so in the good put, they all do more or less the same. BBR does better initially, uh, but the other ones are not too far behind in terms of overall good put. Uh, in terms of retransmission, which is the diamond, BBR, you know, is in the order of like almost four percent, going down to one and a half percent. The other ones are very, very low, like 0.1 percent or lower. Uh, so now I'm going to look at the good puts of each of the different flow types: streaming, a megabyte, and 10 kilobytes, to see how they how fair the algorithm is with the different sizes. Okay. So this is the streaming. And again, BBR does really well, right? The BBR flows, the streaming flows with BBR do really well. Remember, that means it's taken away bandwidth from the eight megabyte and the t one megabyte RPCs, right? So well again, the overall utilization of the bandwidth is very close to the same for all of them. But this means unfairness based on the flow size. Uh, the 8 megabytes RPCs, you know, obviously the uh, BBR, the red ones, suffer. They're giving most of it to the streaming flow. Uh, and the retransmissions, obviously, you know, again, are higher for uh, BBR. Uh, and let's see, BIC does really well. Uh, and yeah, that's well also for the eight megabytes. And this is the one megabyte RPCs, right? Uh, this is the cost. The streaming does really well. The one megabyte RPCs do really poorly. This is the average good put. You know, like four or five times slower than everybody else. Okay. Um, and in terms of the latencies, which is probably what we think more about when we talk about RPCs, not the throughput, but the latencies, Obviously, you know, like the BBR latencies are huge. Like, man, I don't know, 10 times more than the other ones for all of these. And if you do look, look at the 99% latency, 99% latencies, they're quite large also. So BBR gives more bandwidth to the streaming flows than the smaller RPCs, right? And if you only had one, a megabyte and one megabyte RPCs, it will give more to the eight megabyte, less to the one megabyte RPCs. You know, that's just inherent on BBR. So what do we know about the results? First of all, you know, we've seen no conditional algorithm is perfect, right? They suffer in one way or another one, like BBR has more transmissions, but it's very fair in most of the cases. Uh, JS suffers against cubic, so it's probably not a good choice if you're gonna have mixed congested traffic. BBR and big hurt cubic. BBR is good at using a bevel bandwidth. It's really good at that. Uh, BBR does well when it's the only flow. Uh, BBR does hurt itself sometimes, like I mentioned, 20% of the time. Uh, and BBR has a lot of retransmissions in this environment that I showed, right? Any comments, Eric? <laughs> oh, I saw you shaking your hand, so I didn't know. Okay, okay. So now we're gonna look at a different scenario. 40 milliseconds RTT, 10 megabits per second, okay? I also run 100 megabits per second, but I didn't have time to make the slide, so we're gonna stick with this one. Uh, so we're gonna start with, you know, again, there's three hosts sending, but because the bandwidth is so, so much smaller, 10 megabits, we're gonna start with one flow per host. One flow is gonna be doing the streaming, another flow is gonna be doing that one megabyte RPC, and I'm going back to that one megabyte because the bandwidth is a lot smaller, and the other host is going to be doing the 10 kilobyte RPC. Okay, so we have less contention. Uh, the good put is good for all of them, and some of these I don't have for big and yeah because those experiments were running when I was creating this the slide. So sorry about that. Uh, and so on the lower axis, I had the number of buffers in the bottleneck. Okay, it starts to half BDP. 1 BDP, 2 BDP, 4 BDP, 8 BDP, okay? That's how much buffering there is on the bottleneck router. Uh, so let's see, they all use the bandwidth very well. Uh, in terms of retransmissions, again, 
uh, BBR has a lot of the transmissions with a slower, uh, fewer number of flows, you know, almost 10%. But when it w w I'm sorry, with a number, smaller number of buffers on the bottleneck. But when, when, it, when we give it more buffers, two, four, or eight BDP, then it does really well, you know, like very few retransmissions. Okay. So BBR in some ways needs more buffers, more than uh, two bandwidth delay product to really do its best. And in this case, you know, it's, it's not retransmitting that much. It's working really well. Uh, I'm going to skip the one megabyte uh, numbers. I'm going to focus on the 10 kilobytes. And I'm going to look at the good put and the 99% latency. And, uh, you know, BBR, again, for the smaller number of buffers, it's hurting the, the good put and the latency uh, for the 10 kilobyte RPCs. Everybody else is doing better. As we increase the number of buffers to 2, 4, and 8 BDP, uh, BBR is doing better. But still, you know, uh, let's see. The good put is higher. Yeah, so it's doing a lot better than, than these guys uh, when it has enough buffers. It's performing quite well. Now, let's see. I'm doing, OK, so now rather than having one flow per host, I'm going to put three flows per host. Every host is doing one streaming, one one megabyte, and one 10 kilobyte RPCs. So we have three times the traffic. So we have a lot more contention. Uh, again, uh, for Big and Jab, I don't have all the numbers. Those things were running as when I prepared the slide this morning at 5 a.m. or 8 a.m. Uh, they all use the bandwidth, the aggregate bandwidth, very well. So this is the link utilization. And the retransmissions, again, you know, BBR tends to be higher with the smaller buffer sizes, but it decreases as you increase, you give it more buffer size. Okay? So, BBR really needs bigger buffer sizes. And taking into account that it was created initially, I mean, one of the reasons was to deal with buffer bloat. You know, it does really well with buffer bloat. Buffer bloat will have a lot of buffering, typically. Oh, really? OK. OK. So uh, I initially thought that one of the reasons was to solve buffer bloat. Eric is. is OK, to decrease packet losses, we OK. Well, PBR uh, on the shallow buffer is being actively worked on. Hopefully, you know, they have. Yeah. Yes, I understand. I understand. OK. OK. Uh, so this is three flows overall. This is three flows, 10 kilobytes, good put. Um, let's see. Uh, for small buffers, I only have cubic and BBR. Cubic does better. Uh, these are little mixed numbers, um, you know. So, for this environment, uh, let me look at the latency. Oh, here, are the, so the latency are the diamonds. So BBR is doing well for this environment, you know. With more traffic, it's doing better than with fewer traffic. And I think what happens is that it falls back to just. It cannot try to do congestion avoidance. It's just doing congestion control in some ways, and it's actually performing better than uh, it was. With six flows per host, uh, for the overall, they all use it well, more or less. Uh, and the retransmissions are, again, higher for BBR. And for the 10 kilobytes, uh, the good puts are lower for BBR. Uh, the latencies are a little bit higher, not too bad. Oh my God, these are one second, two seconds, three seconds. Uh, they are bad for everybody. Outside the quick question. Uh, yes. So outside the streaming case, you don't see any of the bandwidth collapse for BPR, right? I mean, do we, do we all the you know, six I flow? Know, right? Because I'm only doing 99% now. It will be hidden there. Okay. It's obviously in, sorry, it's obviously not as often as the 20% we saw with two flows for that scenario, right? And by the way, that scenario is really bad because BBR needs buffering. And the worst case that I saw you, the 20% case was for 10 gigabits per second and very like 
one tenth or one twentieth the bandwidth delay product of buffering, right? So that's like the worst case scenario for BBR. Mm -hmm. In these last ones that I did, the queuing was half one full BDB, two four eight. So mm -hmm. it's it's a lot better for BBR in the, this scenario. So uh, I didn't do the numbers to see if there was collapse. Uh, I'll, I'll go back and see if there's if if one flow collapsed or not in the distant areas. It may not happen, right? And remember that BBR is being used, and in their production numbers for Google, you know, they're seeing good results. So on their more realistic network conditions, it seems to be performing well for them. Uh, I think my, one of my concerns is, you know, under some scenarios where there's high losses, and BBR doesn't care, it does really well with losses, right? It's on losses, uh, it may be hurting other type of flows like cubic and all that, right? And also, I didn't cover here the scenario because out of time, what happens when you have random losses, not losses due to congestion? BBR would do really well on those scenarios. Everybody else would suffer, right? So under those cases, BBR is ideal. It would do really well. But I didn't cover them because I can only really run so many thousands of experiments. right yeah. um, how do you simulate or emulate this streaming um, by the net EM I mean so if I see like a, a collapse right how do we know that this is not the uh, the streaming um, server actually collapse not the um, uh, where's that the uh, no no they're right? going they're going they're just going slowly right so I'm not sure I understand. I mean, so these so are running on the same if server. If the streaming actually really um, model the um, what, is, what do you call it, like in the media downscale? I'm using NetPerf to do a, like a streaming NetPerf, right? So from one, so the same host in many of these experiments is running multiple flows. One happens to be a streaming, mm. you know, using Net, NetPerf, and also using NetPerf to do the requ you know request reply transfers of one megabyte or ten kilobytes, and so for the streaming experiments where it collapsed, uh, it was still going, but the, this congestion window collapsed, right? I mean, I could see congestion window was all the way down. So it was not that the process was blocked for something. The congestion window, TCP, totally slowed it down, right? Okay, got it. Yeah, but I, I mean, I, I get the graphs for, I get like 10 graphs per experiment that show you congestion windows, rates, uh, ACK rates, retransmits, you know, RTTs, mean RTTs. So when I see something strange, I go there, look at it, and you know, it showed me that. that. Any other questions? Even if you don't ask questions, I'm not gonna let you go out and eat yet, okay? So you better ask. I'm actually, is it on yet? I'm actually interested in the data center case. So you said you use two queues, and what kind of congestion? Uh, what kind of yeah? So for, so for DC TCP, yeah. you have to uh, if you're going to have cubic flows, uh, you know, competing, yeah. you need to separate them. Otherwise, cubic will fail, yep. right? I mean, it will do really poorly. Uh, so one queue had ECN enable with uh, you know with I think the I was using the same thresholds like high and low around. I think 80 kilobytes uh, to, to mark the ECN. Uh, and then for MB, I'm not doing any marking. It's just to se segregate MB from cubic to, to protect MB from cubic. Um. So there is something which is called L4S, where you also have like two separate queues, but you um, couple the AQM that is used on both queues, so you can actually be more fair depending on the number of flows you have, so it will adapt automatically. Yeah, the the top of solutions we have do not can I do not know the number of flows. So they yeah, that would be good. But then what would happen is that people would say like, oh, rather than running one big flow, I'm gonna run fifty smaller flows, right? So I get more bandwidth. But yes, I <laughs> know. But thank is, you. Is your TCP BPF congestion window clamping, is that functionally equivalent to putting a, a clamp in the route? Yes, it is the same. Uh, it's only just a mechanism that it's easier, I think, for us to deploy because, uh, you know, uh, yeah. So any way you want to clamp it, we have, and most of the gains of TCP BPF 
you know, I mean, it decreases the scene RTO, so there are losses for the scene. It will recover very quickly. And it also decreases the buffer sizes so that you don't waste space. Uh, you know, but yes, the main gains are reflected in these experiments is due to the clamping correct. So uh, in the Im test implementation that I show here is done initially, it looks at the IP addresses. And you know we have IPv6 ad addresses that encode some geographical information in terms of data center, cluster, m region, et cetera. And we can use those to, to decide what would be the right clamp. You know, I know how far away we are. I see, so it's not a function of uh, number of flows. It's just, uh, you know. No, it would be static, very hard to do it, right? Be right? Because like the congestion is at a switch that is going through many different hosts are going through it. There's really no good way for you to know how many flows are, are competing, right? And if you knew, you do not know that all of them are actually active at that time. So, correct. That's why, you know, like we try to do things like NV and BBR that are more dynamically trying to, so for example, for this scenario, NB is reducing the congestion window in some cases, you know, to 20 or 10 packets, right? Because it's seeing the, con the congestion. So it's actually, it works well to, to reduce it in the dark environment. Uh, Talking about uh, dynamic algorithm, we all know the congestion control is very dynamic and digital algorithm, right? Yeah. I vaguely remember there was a Facebook paper a few years back yes. trying to schedule packet by packet, right? How, 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 how does that go? I haven't tested it. You know, they run some experiments. It seems to work. Uh, so, okay, you, you guys are not deployed. It is that. not deployed, you know. Uh, so it was, uh, it was an academic, you know, and we were interested to see what, what it could be done, but it was mostly an academic team project. But I wasn't involved on that, so, you know, I'm the wrong person to ask. Anything else? Okay. I guess you guys are hungry, so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>